Hi beautiful people! Today I will demonstrate how to do the completion process in a very special way. I incorporate often elements of parts work in it. During a completion process, often parts of us that store the trauma start communicating with us in a symbolic way. Either you start see an image or a person or an aspect of your personality moves forward, or maybe um, uh, you start to communicate with a part of you that stores a lot of pain. It is really beneficial for us if we learn how to go with the flow in that moment and start communicating with that part, because they tell us exactly what they need to heal, why they have been split off, and um, how we can resolve the, the trauma. So I would really encourage you, like the completion process is basically a shamanic journey, it's a shamanic practice and every consciousness is different. Every consciousness leads the way and tells us exactly how we can heal it, but we need to follow it and we need to follow our intuition to do that. So the backstory is that Erin wants to quit smoking and we basically start with her feeling the feeling of never and never being able to have a cigarette again because that evokes a panic in her. When you leave a comment below, please be respectful because Erin showed us such a vulnerable side of her and I'm so grateful that she was willing to expose herself in such a way for the purpose of education. Otherwise, enjoy and yeah, send her some love during the process. I can't feel or think when I'm looking at you. I don't know why, but I'm just, so I'm just going to close my eyes and... And just one second before you start, do you have tissues close by? Oh, no. I'm going to close my eyes and just tell myself I'm never going to smoke again. <laughs> oh, my eyes are twitching. And I, I feel like down below my belly button is where I've... I feel something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Thing that's coming up that always comes up whenever I think of this is like a little monster, like the nicotine monster. Yeah. Is it like an image you see? Mm hmm. And I always try to talk to it. And is it talking back? No, he's just angry. Okay. What does this monster look like? Like short little legs and a spiky round body. Big huge eyes. He's just like... <laughs> And what do you feel when you look at the monster? Like I just, I want to befriend it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So you, do you, do you like it? Do you have sympathy for it? Yes. Like he doesn't scare me. It just, like I want to calm him down. <laughs> Because he's angry. Right. And do you know why he's angry? Because he wants nicotine, but I don't want to give it to him. Ah. So, yeah, and he's totally just attached with this, this feeling like, I gotta go smoke. I gotta go smoke. So for him, it's this big need. Mm-hmm. Because then once I go smoke, then he disappears. Yeah. Do you now see him for you? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shall we try speaking to him? Sure. Like, I kind of want to say, how can I make you feel better? How can I make you less angry other than a cigarette? <laughs> hmm. 
He said love. Okay, now there's a bunch of stuff coming up. <sighs> Okay. I'm here with you. Okay. You don't need to be strong here. Take deep breaths and feel into your body. Now my mind is telling me, well, whatever, my intuition is telling me that it's not this isn't really a monster. This is me. This is a part of me. Yeah. And that this part of me just needs love. <sighs> yeah. But I do think it's so wonderful that um, from the beginning you didn't, you called it a monster, but you didn't find it repelling. No. Okay, now he's like standing there, his hands on his hips, <laughs> saying, so what are you going to do? <sighs> yeah. Um, maybe we can ask him in, in what ways does he need love, if you know. I keep hearing the word attention. Okay. Don't know. Just. I think that, you know, attention is something that we have been often deprived of. Agree. So I'm going to ask what kind of attention it says, just listen to me. <laughs> wow. Maybe you can tell him that right now you're really present with him. Yeah. Says I'm lonely. Oh, okay. How does it make you feel when he tells you that? Um, kind of, kind of a relief or like, I understand it because I think that that is definitely a hidden part of me. Like I have this image or persona that's the strong, independent, I don't need anyone type of person that I cling to. But hearing that voice it's like a reminder that that could be just probably something I'm pushing away. <laughs> I don't want to be lonely or admit that I'm lonely. I feel so, like, yeah. I was just going to say it. It feels like truth. Um, I invite you to sit with that for a minute, you know, and just, yeah, try to feel your body and and resist it and I think being honest about something is like the really the first really great step we can do. I can tell like I, I'm getting more relaxed and like my head just wants to droop. <sighs> so I have an idea. Do you think it would be possible for you to go into the perspective of the monster? I sure can try. I don't know why, but I usually put my hands together when I do this. My heart is definitely pumping faster. I feel like I want to clench my fists. Do you feel the anger of him? Yeah, a little bit. More like, ah. <laughs> Not like I want to hit someone anger, just like, ah. Like I, no. Oh, I don't know. Crazy, almost. Yeah. 
like an expressive. Mm -hmm. What do you feel in your body? I feel like I need to take a bunch of big deep breaths. My shoulders feel tight. A lot of twitching going on in my legs. My eyes, I'm like, <laughs> they're just like pushed shut. Yeah. I invite you to relax and to the sensation as much as possible. And yeah, being present with this alone, such a healing thing, and you were doing really good. I can see that it's hard for you. So I want, I want you to ask yourself the question, when was the first time I felt this feeling? It's showing, my mind is showing me the, the very conversation that started this entire smoking process. Mm -hmm. And it's showing me like connect the dots. The feeling I feel right now is the same way I felt in that moment. Yeah. You told me that it was when you were a teenager, right? Yeah. Like I can even picture the car that I was sitting in with my boyfriend <coughs> at the time. <clears throat> yeah. And when he gave me the ultimatum of either I have to start smoking or he's going to break up with me, it's like that fear of loneliness yeah but mad like frustrated like you no this isn't right <laughs> yeah but yeah loneliness can really be such a big threat yeah <laughs> Okay, so if possible, can you go into first perspective of your teenage self? Okay, give me an example of first perspective. So like me that, talking to her? No, that you, um, because you see the scene before you, do you see yeah. it? Like, so that you can imagine that you're dropping into her body. Okay, defeated. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you as this teenage self again, when was the first time I felt this way? And just see if any other image of a younger self pops up or maybe just a different feeling or smell. Okay. I keep seeing my dad, but I'm not seeing any specific anything other than just my dad yeah that's totally okay so just feel into your body and maybe concentrate on your dad <laughs> has physically anything changed for you my eyes aren't as tight my shoulders are more relaxed and I don't have any twitching <laughs> Do you have any idea, an intuitive idea, how old you are? Nine. How do you feel about your dad being there? Neutral, not not good, not bad. Just like I, just kind of looking at him like, what's going on? So I'm gonna ask you as the nine-year-old one more time. When was the first time I felt this feeling. Okay, now I see a very specific event. I see my grandpa, so my dad's dad. And it's my, it's my birthday party. 
and I'm like happy and excited until I'm standing next to my grandpa kind of and he's sitting in the big recliner and I that's so weird I can see that I have a pink sweater on and I am like hey grandpa like arms out ready to give him a big hug and I give him a big hug and then he's like looks at me oh looks up at my dad She's getting a little chunky, isn't she? Oh. And I, just saying that, I can feel in the very same spot for when we first started, just down below my belly button. Like, turmoil. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I had the same feeling when my monster said he needed love. <laughs> yeah. Let yourself experience this feeling because you know you're in the safe space with me. You can really express everything. Because I can imagine it must have been so hard to hear such a unloving thing from this person. And then everybody just acts like they didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those things that seems such a small thing, but it's such a punch in the face. Yeah, you're totally valid to feel really upset about this. I can really understand you. I just keep seeing myself now hugging her. <laughs> yeah? Oh, wow. <laughs> like... <laughs> giving her the big speech. You're beautiful. You're smart. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I'm here with you. Totally okay to cry. It's totally okay. So, if possible, do the same thing then in the car that you basically go into her perspective. And can you see your adult self now with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just whip open the car door and I like hip bump my little self over and I'm ready to like yell at my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, sorry. Where are we now? In the car oh. or on your birthday? Sorry. I, I skipped from my birthday back to me sitting in the car with my, my teenage self. Okay. Um, but I can go wherever you want me to go. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it would be really good if we could go back to the birthday party. Okay. So, if it's possible to go into the first perspective of the child, the small child, and look around you, what you can see. I see my dad and my grandma, specifically. I have no idea where my mom is. <laughs> yeah. So there, there couldn't have been 
my mom must have been, which totally makes sense, nowhere in sight, because she would have been the only one that would have said something. You know. Oh. Oh, I really feel for you. Yeah, it's so okay to be upset about this. <sighs> really relax into the floor. You don't need to be strong at all. <laughs> You're just a little child. And this shouldn't have happened. So, <clears throat> how would you feel How would you feel if your adult self is stepping into the scene? I feel like I want, I just want my mom. Yeah, okay. I can totally understand that. <laughs> Shall we get your mom into the scene? No? Okay. So if you want to, we can freeze everyone else. And then your mom can come and give you a really big hug. Can you feel her? <laughs> and just cry with her, because I'm sure that she is totally okay with you. Very soft with her, because you're her little girl. I'm here with you as well. You're not alone in this situation. She's preparing her speech to them. <laughs> just like, just like she always does. <laughs> yeah. So I see, I'm seeing her like stare like. She's letting go of me, but she's kind of putting me behind her, like with one arm. And then her figure comes up and she looks at my grandpa and my dad. And just <sighs> don't you ever say that to anyone again. <laughs> yeah. She's really standing up for you. She's really got your back. <sighs> yeah, just feel this feeling. I don't know if you can see how, see in front of you how she is there for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really feel all in this moment the pain and the hurt, but also the destruction. Yeah, let those waves come. <laughs> it is really good. Really good. Okay, now I, I see me, old and older me, and I kind of crouch down with myself behind my mom still. So, are we, did we go away from the situation? No. I still... I just see my mom standing and facing my dad and my grandpa and, and my eight-year-old or nine-year-old me and me now are just kind of crouched behind her, but we're hugging. 
Oh, like okay. feeling, feeling better. But <laughs> when my mom kind of turns around to the to the two of us, she's like, "Screw those guys." <laughs> So, what I want you to do as your adult self that you, what you did before already, but maybe one more time, that you really tell your child self that all the things you're feeling are so valid and that you can 100% understand her and that there's nothing wrong with expressing. And then when you can, with the perspective, that you hear this from your adult self as well. I feel like I want to tell them off, <laughs> which is not like me. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know what to say. So first of all, if you want, we can put some measures in place that will maybe make you feel safer. So for example, we could take the possibility away that they can answer you back. Or you can have someone that is super strong, maybe your mom and someone else by your side. Or if you have any ideas. <laughs> Duct tape. Duct tape over their mouths. I like that idea. Yeah, not, totally. Not in a mean way, but just just so I know nothing else could come out of the, either one. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. <sighs> Yeah. So, and and everything now I want you to experience from your child self, okay? I feel like I got my mom on this side, and my older self on this side. Yeah. I Thank just want to say, it's not okay to say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really let yourself express everything. <coughs> There's no rush at all. Take as long as you need. It doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> The outside doesn't matter. Oh, for some reason, I just want to say, well, you don't have any hair. So, because <laughs> my grandpa was bald. Oh, <laughs> so stupid. I think that is very appropriate for your age. <laughs> <laughs> you can say all the things you want. There's no judgment here. No political correctness. This is all about you and the people that the situation is okay. That he should have stood up for me. Yeah. Yeah, he should. <laughs> Oh, I can really see that you're in pain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm holding the space with you. But now I just want to continue my birthday party without them. <laughs> yeah, okay. You have one hour, so if you want them to leave, you can make them go. <laughs> You guys don't get to be here. <sighs> You're doing so well. I feel like there's so much pain and tears to be stuck. Now they're all allowed to come out. Yeah, take me deep breath. I see the my mom and older me, my sister, like all with a big, 
piece of cake in front of us and we're enjoying our cake and we're going around the circle telling each other like what we like compliments we're compliment to each other and how beautiful we are oh wow that's a cool thing It feels like how it should have been. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you were fully there. You received the compliments of these women that really love you and really see you for who you are and see that all the amazing things that you bring to the table. They are so yeah. and we're just like we got all joy joining hands and like <laughs> I hear my mom say we are women hear us roar <laughs> <sighs> it's a much better birthday party <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> What kind of um, how is your body feeling now? Tingly, <laughs> which is good. Nice. So we now have the possibility that we go to a safe place which is your personal safe place, um, which is basically a paradise just for you. But we could also spend a little bit more time at the birthday party, if you like. No, I'm done <laughs> with that. All right. <sighs> so before we go, um, I would like you to look around the room and see if there's maybe any fractured aspects of your soul that have split off, you know, when your grandpa said this horrible thing to you. Okay, say that one more time. So, um, look into the room and see the if there are The birthday party room? Exactly. Okay. If there's fractured aspects of your soul, it would basically be like little children maybe hiding in the room. So children and like basically parts of you. Just intuitively look. If yeah. there's no one, that's great. Say I s I've seen two, but I, I, nothing's coming up as far as which ones they are, who they are. That's totally okay. We yeah. don't know that. And can you, can you call them back so that they become part of you again? Is that possible? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that was really weird, but... <laughs> yeah, okay. Just like... So, so they are a part of you again? I, that's what I feel like, yeah. Beautiful. Really good. Perfect. Oh. Okay. So, um. Okay. Let's I feel like opening my eyes. <laughs> close them. Uh, okay. We're gonna go, we're gonna make our way now to your personal safe haven. So maybe your older self can carry you or you can just walk however you like. And we're like hand in hand, yep. Perfect. So you are walking now along a, a path and this path is leading to your personal paradise, to your safe haven. And this place only exists for you and your needs. 
It's, it's a tree. It's a crook of a tree. <laughs> Just so weird. <laughs> because I could be alone and I could see the view from above. Okay. So do you feel like you're already in your safe place? Yes. Okay. So you said it's in a tree? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Is it uh, like a magical tree, a magical place? Of course it's magical. <laughs> 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 oh. what do you see in there it, it's not so much what I see in the tree but it's it's just it's it's the feeling of peace and it's the ability to like I said like look looking down from up above, everything just looks peaceful. And you can see how like the world just works in harmony and it's mesmerizing when you're up, up and away and looking down on everything. Oh. So I'm just kind of like sitting there like, oh, yeah, it's so much more peaceful up here. <laughs> and I can see how everything works together. Yep, that's my place. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so um, I want you to imagine that um, the memory when you were at this birthday party is like floating before you were like in a bubble. Yeah. And you look at that and we are now going to destroy the bubble because the old memory is gone because we created a new memory for you. Yeah. So you can choose any method you want to destroy it. I was just going to say, I feel like I see myself, I'm tossing it out of the tree. Like, just, oof, there it goes. <laughs> Great. Yeah, take a deep breath. <sighs> <laughs> it's gone. Yep. And it's not like I'm throwing it like, ugh. I'm just like, poof, like a frisbee almost. Just don't need, don't need that anymore. Perfect. Yeah. Like my shoulders are. <laughs> yeah, I really feel this new feeling. And so to to really arrive in your new life, um, we're also gonna go and take a bath in a magical healing water so somewhere in this tree there should be some kind of body of water it could be. okay for some people it's a lake for some people it's a sea a shower maybe like a shower on the on the tree? <laughs> yeah. I've, I've always had a fixation on clawfoot tubs, so I don't know how this clawfoot tub is sitting in the tree, but it's there, and I'm going to climb into it. <laughs> Perfect. So I want you to, that the adult self is also coming with you, and, and that the, the bathtub is actually have space for you too. Perfect. And when you go into this water, it's such healing water that it removes every negative um, experience you've had from you, just floating away. And when you're in the water, 
also drink the water, so that's also healing from the inside. Can you feel yourself being purified? Yes. That's fun. And whenever you feel like it's completed, you can come out and try yourself with a really fluffy towel. We just have this one big fluffy towel and older me comes in from behind and wraps up little me or both in one big towel. Like, oh, this is nice. Oh, that's wonderful. How do you feel when you look at uh, your older self? Like, safe. Wow, that's loved, so yeah, loved, safe. <sighs> oh, that's so great. So now, um, maybe you can find a bit of a comfortable spot. And if you like, you can merge together with your adult self. Because in the moment of trauma, you basically split up from her. Yeah. So we're sitting crisscross applesauce and like she wants to put her hands up to me. <sighs> and then she just like steps into me. <laughs> yeah. Really feel that what's happening. Trust your intuition. Okay, no, these are like happy tears. <laughs> this is so much different. <sighs> like, I found the missing piece. <laughs> yeah, and how, how, what a beautiful piece it was. I mean, I could see her in front of me, this little girl. Oh, so bright. Mm. Full of life. So you are you still sitting on the tree now? Um yeah, I'm still on the tree. But it's just me, like my older self, me now. Yeah. I'm just kind of looking around like I like this place. I know that I can always come back here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 And the, the beautiful thing about the safe place is that you can always, this is like fully your paradise. So whatever you want to do with it, you can always go somewhere else. But it's, it's the first time that I've ever heard such a safe place and it sounds so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and knowing that I get to control who comes. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I'm ready to like climb down. Yeah. Perfect. Then do that. And when you climb down, imagine some sort of entrance that only opens for you. Oh. Really safe. Yeah. Well, it's like steps going down the tree but then when i get to the bottom and i look up it's like they disappear so there's no steps perfect yeah no one will even know it's there <laughs> exactly yeah so you can slowly come back to this moment in time and really take your time keep your eyes closed and yeah slowly remind yourself that you're sitting in your room and it's 2019 and we have October the 16th yeah. Yeah, I can definitely say that I feel lighter Definitely. 
That's good. Uh, I really don't want to open my. Oh, well, keep them closed. It's totally okay. You can uh, stretch also first, maybe a little bit the body. That's what I'm always doing. Yeah. Oh, wow. move yourself a bit. Feel your physical body. Oh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the completion process demonstration with Erin and I found it such a touching process and what I really wanted to highlight here is that that is a very ex typical example of a completion process. The trauma she had seemed so small, you know, someone was commenting on her weight when she was younger, but could you feel how painful it was from her, from a person that she loved so dearly, to hear basically that she was not good enough, that something was so wrong with her? I really, really want to stress like how important it is that we change doing this to children and we change doing this to each other because these kind of small things can lead to such big traumas in our lives. And uh, uh, one motivation of mine also to show these completion processes is to, to show you guys because I feel like often sometimes when we just talk about these things, you can't really, you can't really understand what, what, how, what bit of an impact that has. You have to really feel it. And yeah, I send you so much love, Erin. Like, thank you so much for doing this. It was wonderful. And to everyone, um, if you would like to support me to do more of these sessions, please leave me a comment below and give me a like. And I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. All the best to you guys.